Hi everyone, I'm Mark Gilbert, commercial nutritionist for the One to One Diet by Cambridge Weight Plan. Um, and today we're just going to talk about COVID-19 health and weight loss. Uh, so of course, over the last year, COVID-19 has reinforced the importance of diet and weight loss. Uh, and as many of you have seen, uh, a lot of my recent work within the business has been spent looking at the science surrounding how diet and weight loss affect your risk. Uh, so today I'm just going to go over some of that science and research with you. Uh, first, we'll look at the many diet and weight related risk factors. Uh, then we'll look at how to minimize your risk of both catching COVID-19 and of having a severe outcome if you do catch it. So we're going to look at how obesity and various diseases increase risk. Uh, we'll look at how obesity itself increases COVID risk. And then we'll look at how obesity related diseases or comorbidities, uh, diseases related to obesity, how they increase the risk. Uh, and then we'll look at uh, what we can do to minimize the risk. So it was realized early on that obesity was a risk factor for COVID. Uh, statistics are changing all the time, but from what I've read and seen, and, and, and if you average everything out, it looks like obesity makes you about one and a half times more likely to get COVID, and it makes you three and a half times more likely to experience severe symptoms uh, and disease if you do. So why does obesity itself increase the risk? Well, first of all, the virus enters the body through a receptor called the ACE2 receptor, and fat cells have a lot more of these receptors. So effectively, that means the more fat cells you have, uh, the more potential entrances the virus will have into the body. It is well established that being overweight reduces immune function. Not only that, but the higher blood sugar in most obese people makes them more susceptible to viruses. But it gets worse than that because exposure to the virus itself further increases blood sugar. So this creates kind of a spiral of escalating blood sugar and escalating COVID disease severity. On top of this, immune cells called T cells are suppressed in obesity. And these cells seem to have a particularly important role in fighting the virus. Finally, obesity makes breathing more labored and difficult in those who contract the virus and impacts sleep and both of these will further reduce immunity and make you less resilient. Let's look at these comorbidities, these diseases that go along with obesity. As we all know, being in a calorie surplus for too long, that is eating more than you're burning off, more calories than you're burning, leads to obesity, but it also leads to the obesity comorbidities. It is not clear to what extent obesity itself or the diseases that accompany it cause severe COVID because there's so much overlap between the two. But the main comorbidities are the following, diabetes, hypertension, which is high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, so diseases of the heart and the blood vessels, inflammation, kidney disease, and vitamin and mineral deficiencies. Interestingly, those with one or more of these diseases and or obesity represent the vast majority of severe COVID cases in people under 60 years old. Okay, so that was a pretty basic slide, but this is a very busy, comprehensive overview of the disease uh, that are both associated with obesity and that increase COVID risk. Uh, just to illustrate that it's very complex interaction, there's lots of things going on here. So what can we do to minimize the risks? Well, weight loss is the key, which means that if you're overweight, diet may be the most important factor in reducing your risk because you'll reduce your number of fat cells, You'll improve your immunity and reduce all of the diseases that are associated with catching the virus. Remember that complex diagram I showed you? Well, losing significant weight has a beneficial effect on all those things. First of all, calorie restriction or dieting has been shown to improve immunity in everything from flies to mice to monkeys to humans. So this seems to be a universal effect. Okay, so now we'll look at low energy diets and their effects on immunity and COVID. Obese humans have impaired immunity, which has been shown in research to be reversed by weight reduction. In one study, when obese subjects with poor immune function were given nutritionally complete, very low calorie diet, their immunity improved significantly. In another study with similar subjects, a nutritionally complete, low calorie diet not only improved immunity, but it improved immunity specifically to viruses. Weight loss also has an effect, specifically on certain signaling molecules called cytokines. And this is critical when we consider COVID because when the wrong kinds of these cytokines get out of control in a COVID patient, massive inflammation occurs. And this is often what requires emergency treatment and the worst possible outcomes of the disease. 
Weight loss decreases levels of the cytokines that cause inflammation, and it increases levels of the ones that decrease inflammation. One last important consideration when it comes to COVID risk is your intake of vitamins and minerals, collectively known as micronutrients. A recent very large review of 231 studies concluded that several micronutrients are crucial to immunity. This includes vitamins A, D, C, E, B6, B12, folate, and the minerals zinc, iron, copper, and selenium, which the reviewers said play vital, often synergistic roles at every stage of the immune response. So they not only work individually, they work together to give you a better immune response. Of all the micronutrients though, vitamin D is emerging as a potential game changer against COVID. Vitamin D deficiency is the most common nutritional deficiency in the world. In the UK, between 30 and 40% of people are deficient during the winter months. And that doesn't even include people who have unhealthy low levels, but aren't deficient. The vast majority of research on vitamin D and COVID shows that low vitamin D is associated with greater risk, with the most recent paper showing a seven times higher fatality rate in those with low vitamin D levels. This has led to a recent letter to governments and health workers globally from 120 experts and scientists urging them to increase the recommended vitamin D intakes by tenfold to help fight COVID. Other important micronutrients are zinc and selenium. Uh, I've seen recommendations for vitamin C quite often uh, during the pandemic, but they seem to be overhyped because the only studies showing effectiveness uh, of vitamin C were those studies that used extremely high dosages, and, and they can only be effective when they're injected because your body can only absorb vitamin C so quickly uh, by the traditional oral method. So mega doses of vitamin C at this point, unless some new research comes out, don't appear justified. So in conclusion, Obesity and its comorbidities impair immunity and increase COVID risk. The risk can be reduced by weight loss and a nutrient-dense diet that contains recommended amounts of vitamins and minerals, including nutritionally complete diet replacement food products.